Today we're gonna have a lot of fun because this is the 2020 Mini John Cooper Works Countryman All 4. But now it has a new, more powerful two liter engine that makes 301 horsepower and 332 foot-pounds of torque. The engine is the B48A20 Technical Update 1, which is a totally different engine than the B46 found in the Cooper S version. That means that this thing finally moves as fast as the John Cooper Works nameplate deserves. Probably sounds as good too. With the help of launch control, it can hit 100 kilometers an hour in 5.1 seconds. Even in these atrocious conditions today in ice and snow, we did 5.2, which is crazy good. This is very fast for a crossover, especially for a crossover under 50,000 Canadian dollars. To be precise, it costs 43,090 Canadian dollars, but as tested, because it has the premium package and the dynamic dampers, it is 48 grand, which is still pretty good. Also, this is the best configuration to buy one if you're interested. It also has a brand new 8-speed Steptronic automatic transmission. Only this one has a mechanically locking limited slip differential for the front axle. That's really cool. And you know what? It actually works and makes a huge difference. It also shifts pretty quickly, allowing the exhaust to release some fart sounds every time you upshift. It's really good, and you know what? Off the line, it's not as dead as it used to be. It picks up quite fast. So overall, good stuff. Another cool point about the gearbox is that when in gear, the torque converter locks up completely, so it feels as immediate as a manual gearbox. Of course, the all-four all-wheel drive system sends power to the back when needed, making this even more fun to drive all year round. Make no mistake though, this isn't all that mini. It's actually a pretty tall crossover and heavy. In fact, it weighs 1.7 tons. So when you take turns aggressively, it does lean a bit despite the firm suspension setup. It's not too much, but it's just enough to help you feel the weight shifting. So when the car starts understeering, you can lift off to make the car rotate and then hammer the throttle to power out of the turn. The handling is very predictable. It's really nicely balanced, but you know what? It's not exactly like a go-kart as it likes to believe. It's more like a dune buggy. If John Cooper Works was around today and had a look at this, he'd probably call it an eyesore until he had a go in it because then good luck wiping the smile off his face. I mean, sure, it's big, heavy, and automatic, but I have to admit it's still tons of fun. And of course, you can totally kill the stability control, which is appreciated by hoonigans like me. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the noisemaker minis have and that buzzing kind of sound they add artificially to the engine note. Good thing is you can delete that. And speaking about mods, the most common mod in the mini world is to add a rear thicker sway bar to make the car rotate even more. Imagine doing that. This thing would be really, really fun. When you switch the driving mode from sport to eco to green, the dampers soften up a bit, making the car nicer over bumpy city roads. The stiffer bushings and higher spring rates don't ever allow it to be comfortable, but hey, this is a JCW, so it's totally fine. The seats are spectacular and they're half leatherette, half suede. They feel perfect, but they are manual to adjust. I mean, I get it. They don't give you the power seats because they want to save the weight for the motors, for the seats and everything. But you know what? This thing is already pretty heavy. So just give me the power seats, mostly because of the memory seat functionality. My wife loves driving this thing and I'm so sick and tired of having to switch everything back and forth. I love memory settings. Come on. Roominess is really good, even in the rear sliding seats. Headroom and legroom are great for the class. And if anything, the limited width might be a problem if you want three people to sit back there. The backs also recline, giving you that little extra edge in terms of practicality and versatility. The trunk is a really good 498 liters, which means it's plenty enough to fit all your stuff with no issues and you get some extra room underneath the cargo floor. The interior looks very funky being a mini and all, but this JCW with the extensive use of suede and red stitching looks even better. The materials used are above average, fit and finish is great, and overall, with its quality switch gear, this little car feels very comfortable wearing the premium badge. The ambient lighting here is also really cool. You can set it to any color you'd like, and it comes from behind the trim that makes it very fancy. You also get really nice floodlights with a mini logo and LEDs around the center console that react to everything you do. You also get wireless CarPlay, you get handheld Android Auto, 
and you also get wireless charging that only fits smaller phones with no case. Fail. The backup camera looks sharp, and so does the very bright heads-up display. The front seats heat up pretty quickly, there's no heated seats in the back, but you do get multiple USB ports for everybody in the car. The steering wheel is very nice too. The paddles could have been a little bit bigger, but it doesn't really matter. Most importantly, on the highway, around the center, it feels a little bit numb. Kind of reminds me of the early F-Body 3 Series BMWs. What feels very good though are the strong Brembo brakes. The pedal is nice and firm, feels great, and brake fade? Nothing to see here. The increase of horsepower and torque is exactly what this car needed in the first place. I mean, now it really moves as it should. And it's not speed off the line that's impressive. It's pick up at speed that blows my mind. Legal to jail happens really quickly. The looks are okay. I can't say I'm in love with it, but the design, I don't mind it at all. The car is very easy to live with. It has great visibility. It calms down just enough when you wanna just chill. And the cost for all this is what I would call reasonable. It's also pretty good on gas. I mean, yes, it requires premium, but it only uses about 10 liters per 100 kilometers combined, which for the performance is fantastic. The only real competition comes from its sibling, the X2 M35i. You can watch the review for that one if you click right up there. But that one is more expensive and less practical. So overall score is nine out of 10 for this excellent compact crossover. Perfect.